What is your musical idol? And that is from Alex and Lacey. Where's Alex and Lacey? Where's Alex and Lacey? <laughs> oh, yeah, what's going on? Um, my musical idol is probably... Lauren Hill is one. Yes. Jeff Buckley's one. Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, Donny Hathaway. Tracy Chapman. I just don't want to disrespect them by missing them out, so I'm really thinking. Uh, Sinead O'Connor is another one. Where did Simon Garfunkel come from? Um, they're just amazing songwriters. Like, was it something that you listened to when you were younger, or was it just...? A combination of, like, both, because my grandparents, like, listened to that. Right. And, uh, and then as I, like, started songwriting, mm. yeah, I just really got into it. And then recently, I kind of rediscovered the album that Paul Simon wrote called Graceland, and um, I've been bumping that non-stop. Not everything that matters Checked up and missed the ride. What was it like performing on the Jules Holland show? I mean, that must have been... That's pretty intimate as well, isn't it? It was cool. No one knows because it, it didn't happen on camera, but I mucked up the first time because you do a lot... Obviously, you do a live one and then you do version for Friday. And I wasn't actually that nervous. My management were super nervous. And they were like, Josh, are you OK? Are you OK? And I'm fine. Are you... Are you cool? <laughs> you all right? Yeah, so I was like, it was really cool, but for whatever reason, I mucked up. And then... Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And Hot Chip, they kept mucking up time and time again. And I had to keep like singing my last line so they could start again. It's going to be so like was... a Twitter war now. Yeah. <laughs> Hot Chip versus <laughs> Josh, yeah. Josh, yeah. But no, it was sick. Um, but it was a long, long day. But yeah, it's cool. And we call those a pre -pre pressure That keep on teaching me when did you discover you had a passion yeah. slash gift for being a singer, songwriter? Probably quite late, actually. Probably when I was, like, 16. I was writing songs before that, but I guess when you're young, you don't... You tend not to look at things as, like, abstract concepts. You just enjoy stuff. Mm -hmm. So you, like, play football or write songs or are creative or do whatever you do, and you just do it because you love it. And you don't necessarily think you're bad or good at it. You just love doing it. Um, so it took me a while to catch on. <laughs> and... Uh, then when I started like performing them and getting reactions and stuff, then you start to think, oh, I'm kind of okay. You're still my best friend. But there's something inside. So Dilly's question yeah. is um, one piece of advice, only one, mm -hmm. for any young up and coming singers trying to break into this hard to crack industry. I stick by, I have the same answer for everyone because it is only one thing, um, just to believe in what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> Because I think the most important thing, not just cracking this industry, but just in anything in life, is success is so um, subjective. And there's a lot of people that, when we look in on their lives, we think they're successful because mm. they've got fame and they've got money and they're performing on huge stages. But if they don't believe in what they're doing, then all those things become void. Whereas if you're broke performing in front of five people, but you believe in it, you're having a much better time than that person. Um, and I found it's made this journey a lot easier, really believing in what I do, because um, it's, not, it's not easy. And plus, you don't ever give up, because it's not your environment that you worry about, it's, it's your, your thing. Whereas, if you don't believe in it, it's easy to start kind of giving up, because you're like, oh, I don't care about it anyway. Oh, we all want to be giants, but our heads are too heavy from the mess that we're in. We all want to have patience, and we want it right now, getting tired of waiting. How did you find making your album? Was it difficult? Are you happy with it? Um, it was probably the easiest part of this whole process because I wasn't signed. So you have like less opinions and less like pressure, less demand. I did it all, um, well, a large majority before, before I signed. So I was just essentially doing what I love doing every day. It got a bit kind of difficult towards the end just because you, you end up making something that's normally quite free-flowing, really linear, because you're going to the studio every day, writing every day, irrespective of if you want to or you're inspired or whatever. Um, so that was a bit annoying. Cool. And yeah, I'm happy with it. Um, <laughs> you can get it on like, iTunes and stuff, and it's on my MySpace. Well, it will be on my MySpace, all the links and stuff. Like some just let you out Run to get off the ground Don't go and waste another day what you got left to deliberate, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Or is there anybody unsigned that you really yeah, want to push? There's a there's there's two people actually and they both support me at the Jazz Cafe. Um, a guy called Marcus Bonfanti who's an amazing blues guitarist and he is a singer as well. And then there's a rapper who supported me called Rax, who's one of not even just from the UK and now just my all one of my all time favourite rappers. Um and again that's probably about it. Everything I listen to is pre sixties. <laughs> <laughs> Retro child. Yeah. This this is kind of like unofficial, but um next week I'm performing with Tom Jones at his what? Yeah and Hammersmith. Oh my god, Jonesy. And um okay. so it'd be cool to like get in the studio with him and, and write something for him and like sing with him as well. You had a picture with him at the voice the other day, Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. We were What a legend. Yeah, he is and he's really humble as well. Is he? Yeah. These are your redemption days. <laughs> yes, that's what I want. <laughs>